In today's user-suggested video, I'm going to tell you about a stolen cocktail, make it incorrectly out of spite for the people who stole it, and then probably end up getting a cease and desist litter sometime in the next week. The painkiller on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hello there, how are we doing today? My name is Michael, I'm a bartender and mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and yes, today we are talking about the painkiller, a pina colada variation that comes out of the British Virgin Islands sometime in the 1970s. Now, this cocktail is the namesake of a bar called the Soggy Dollar Bar, which is located on the island of Joost van Dijk in the British Virgin Islands. And it's actually an island so small that it does not have its own port, you know, its own dock, its own place to stay. So, the bar gets its name because you've got to swim to the, to the beach to visit this bar, and all your money gets wet, and therefore a soggy dollar bar. <laughs> this cocktail is one of the things that put this bar on the map, and was created most likely by the bar's owner, Daphne Henderson, though there are a couple of other previous owners who may have had a stake in making it. As a variation of the pina colada, this subs out uh, the more traditional Jamaican kind of funkier rums for a British Virgin Islands rum, which is apparently, though I've never had one, remarkably fruity. Uh, and then with the addition of some orange juice, embracing the kind of coalition of rum and fruit and coconut into one's holistic unit. Now, the painkiller was originally made with Cruzon rum by some accounts, but over time, the recipe sort of evolved into its actualized version that uses Pusser's rum. And this is where the cocktail gets stolen. Poster's Rum is a rum you might not know about. I myself know nothing about it. I've seen it literally nowhere ever and never bothered to try it. But it is a recreation of the rum of the British Empire that was given to British naval sailors up until like 1970. It's supposed to be faithful to that styling of rum, and that kind of fruity characteristic that gives drinks is a big part of its namesake. It was being used in the painkiller and out of sort of intrigue for figuring out why people liked this cocktail so much, Charles Tobias, the founder of the Pusser's Rum Company, goes to Joost van Dyke in the British Virgin Islands, because he has a home on a different island nearby, and visits Daphne Henderson and becomes friends with her and tries to see about this cocktail that uses his rum in it, his rum in it, that is so popular. Apparently, and this is all coming mostly from the Pusser's website, website, by the way, they have a story of this on their website, and it's a disgusting uh, revisionist piece of shit, but Daphne does not want to give him the recipe for the painkiller, for obvious reasons. The tiki and tiki adjacent cocktail world was hyper competitive, especially back in the day. Trader Vic and Don Beach famously go back and forth, other smaller tiki adventures are likewise the same way. And she doesn't want to give him the recipe. Charles Tobias, the founder of Pusser's Rum, by his own account on their website, takes one of the cocktails from the bar back to his boat, takes that back to his kitchen on his uh, in his home, on the island of Tortula in the British Virgin Islands, reverse engineers the cocktail from scratch without the permission and against the overt will of Daphne Henderson, the person who created it, and then has the gall to bring it back to her bar, have 10 patrons who go unnamed and probably did not exist because this is probably all just marketing, and states that every single one of those 10 patrons liked his version of the cocktail better because it was less sweet, which I, fucking doubt. <laughs> in all honesty, it would be bad enough to take what is a work of culinary art from a single person, but it gets worse. Charles Tobias sort of reinventing, rediscovering, stealing, that means stealing. It's marketing words for stealing. Stealing this cocktail from Daphne Henderson happens around 1979, maybe a couple years after that. But in 1989, Pusser's Rum, as a company, files a trademark with the U.S. Patent Office for the recipe to a painkiller as a result. Because the recipe to a painkiller, based on Hen Tobias's own account, has specifically Puzzler's Rum listed in it. And I guess that gives them legal license to do that. This was not seriously a problem. Because I mean, in your personal life, no company is gonna come after any individual for using the wrong rum in making one of their cocktails. Businesses, however, because in 2011, a bar in the Lower East Side of New York City called Painkiller opened up. It was a tiki bar, and on their menu, they served painkillers as sort of the namesake of their bar. They were not using 
Pusser's rum in their painkillers. In fact, they were using Cruzan, which is a different form of rum, maybe also from the British Virgin Islands, uh, that was originally being used in the cocktail. Well, Pusser's didn't like that their namesake was being used to sell drinks at this bar and that their cocktail was being sold at that bar made incorrectly. So they filed a lawsuit against Painkiller. <laughs> the legal definition of this as a list in a British Virgin Islands law site, uh, like a law blog down below, was that Pusser's Rum won the lawsuit, but uh, is good, lost the war. <laughs> the bar Painkiller was not forced to close. They reached an out of court settlement that included Painkiller changing its name to PKNY and no longer serving painkillers. As a result, they came up with a cocktail called a PK that's very, very similar, but rebalanced, and though I've never tried it before, I know off the top of my head is going to be a thousand times better than this cocktail. <laughs> they just changed, they adapted. They they fixed all of the legal problems with it and then just kept doing what they were doing. And you know what? They got more famous for it. Unfortunately for pussers, eh, actually, fuck them, so I don't really care, but they <laughs> this lawsuit caused a industry-wide boycott of pussers rum products following the deciding, you know, the decision of the court. That means that Puzzler's Rum was no longer popular. It did not show up in bars. I, I have never seen it in my go-to tiki bar, uh, Three Dots and a Dash in Chicago. I've never seen them have a bottle of Puzzler's. It appears nowhere on their menu. And I honestly have never seen a bottle of it on the shelves at liquor stores. And I, I don't go to just Tiffany's, which is like a local, like smaller wine and spirit shop. I also go to Mega Bev, which is like Bevmo for the people in the Midwest. Pusser's was boycotted so hard, I wouldn't be surprised if you really can't find Pusser's anywhere anymore. <laughs> it, it was a major loss for them, is what I'm getting at. And it just goes to show <laughs> that if you're gonna act like a cunt, the people in this industry who are not just bartenders, but mixologists, artists of cocktails, will defend their namesake to the bitter end. Uh, even if you steal it from them violently under their nose without their permission. So uh, that's the full history of this cocktail. A surprisingly wild roller coaster of anti-capitalist feelings aside, uh, let's go ahead and talk about making the cocktail. There's a couple things I want to talk about in particular, but I'm going to start with my usual statement on pina colada and pina colada variations. Use the best ingredients you can find. That means the best pineapple juice, the best cream of coconut, and in this case even, the best orange juice, because these things are going to make up such a significant body of your cocktail that you need to make them as nice as possible. Uh, as always, I'm going to use my homemade cream of coconut. I have some freshly made, uh, freshly squeezed orange juice here that is from just fresh local organic oranges. And then I didn't have time to go to the store and buy a pineapple and like break it down all the way, but I've heard really amazing things from both Blues on the Rocks and uh, Anders Ericsson uh, about Trader Joe's cold pressed pineapple juice. Apparently the stuff is just really, really good. So I'm gonna use that today as a substitute because apparently it might be the, the, best, the best version of store-bought pineapple juice anyone can find anywhere. Second thing, um, I'm not gonna make this with Pusser's Rum. Uh, and there's a very strong reason for that. The spec for this cocktail fucking sucks. The painkiller is a full, I'm not shitting you, eight ounces of fluid. <laughs> and at that, a very unbalanced eight ounces of fluid because four ounces of that is pineapple juice, two ounces of that is rum, one ounce is orange juice and one ounce is cream of coconut. That's, first of all, so much pineapple juice that it's the only thing you're going to taste. So something as gentle as a Pusser's rum is not going to show up almost at all. And I made one of these the other night just to see how it was. I made it with a Jamaican rum and I could barely taste that, which is really fucking outstanding almost. The thing is wildly out of balance and stupidly oversized and excessive and I hate everything about the people who came up with it. So to fuck them over, I'm not making this painkiller with Pusser's Rum. I'm gonna use uh, Plantation Old Fashioned Traditional Dark and Overproof Rum from Guyana, Jamaica, and I think uh, Barbados. It's gonna stand up way better to there being so much volume in this cocktail and it's gonna give us some actual rum flavor which is what makes a pina colada so good. Final thing you're seeing here, uh, this is not my usual shaker, this is a reused branded shaker. It's the largest shaker I have because I had to accommodate the massive volume of this cocktail. Um, don't buy these. The reuse shakers are, don't no, reduce, sorry. It's called reduce. Whatever, who gives a shit? Don't buy these, they suck. They're vacuum tubes, so you can't feel how cold it's getting unless you're holding out of the cap. The caps are really flimsy. They seal up really, really bad, um, which I don't have 
with you know that problem with my other cobbler shakers. Maybe just don't make this version of the cocktail. Just just maybe just make the PK. Just make the PK. I that, think that, that's gonna be better for you. <laughs> but for the sake of uh, consistency, I'm going to make a painkiller. All right. Without further ado, let's go ahead and make a painkiller. I'm going to start this off with one ounce of a homemade cream of coconut. We'll come behind that with one ounce of freshly squeezed orange juice. And then the, the thing that kills me about this, that I think is so excessively stupid, four ounces of fresh, high quality pineapple juice. I'm also gonna give this, um, this cold pressed pineapple juice a taste because I've, I've just never had it before. And I, I wanna know what it's like. Shit, that tastes fresh. <laughs> wow, oh my God, that's great. It's actually got like the acidity you get, not the acidity necessarily, but like a kind of tingly, enzyme -y, I guess acidity, yeah. Like light, light sourness you get from real pineapple juice. That tastes, that tastes like, like fresh, fresh pineapple juice. That's really good, holy shit. Anders, David, you guys were not talking shit. This is some really valid stuff. Wow, okay. <laughs> I, my, my skepticism be damned, fuck. <laughs> Finally, we're gonna go ahead and do two ounces of the overproof rum of your choice. An insane eight ounces of fluid, ladies and gentlemen. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> That's all our ingredients. Let's go ahead and add some ice. I'm gonna do something different today. I don't normally uh, change up the way that I do ice in my cocktail so I get really consistent results. But this cocktail is so big that you kind of have to do it in the style of shake it over ice and then dirty dump everything from your shaker into the glass you're serving it in. Because otherwise, there's not enough fucking room for everything. I don't know how you would fit this into a glass with fresh ice. So we're gonna fill this up with some smaller ice and then uh, shake and dirty dump. We're gonna cap that up, tap that down, and give that a shake for 10 to 12 seconds to chill and combine. I wanna flip this. I always do the little flip, but I don't trust the shaker enough, so sorry. Whew. There's eight ounces in here and a lot of ice. It's a heavy drink. This is a workout to make. Fuck. <laughs> Some of, if not the largest glasses that I own are these uh, 16 ounce uh, highballs. So I'm gonna do that. Crack this open. This is why I don't like this one. It's really hard to get open. <laughs> and then we'll just dump this straight into our glass. <laughs> to finish this off, we need a garnish. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an orange here. Split that down the center and get ourselves a nice little half wheel. And take that and just kind of perch that on the on the rim there to hold it in place. This isn't necessarily called for, but I do like it in pina colada variations. I'm gonna do a couple of pineapple fronds because I, I had some on hand. Finally, a dusting of some grated cinnamon. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the painkiller. So with our station more or less cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our painkiller a taste. I wanna remark, this is the foamiest, thickest head I've ever seen on a pina colada or pina colada variation for that matter. I'm stunned, honestly, and it looks really, really pretty. It holds up really well to powdered garnishes like nutmeg. It looks really, really nice, but let's see how it tastes. Cheers. I'll admit I might've overdone it with a full two ounces of overproof. <laughs> it's a lot better than a regular painkiller that does not have any overproof rum in it. <laughs> the overproof, um, I, we've talked about it before in the Angostura Colada video. The overproof is really intense on its flavors. It's very forward with the rum characteristics of dark brown, burnt caramelized sugar and, and funky Jamaican rum esters and things like that. It's really good. So it stands up really strongly to having a lot of dilution from the juices and a lot of the sugary sweetness from everything. It stands out really, really strong. It's still very much punchy, but it's actually not a lot here. There's so much body to this cocktail that a full two ounces of overproof is really just making the cocktail around the same proof and concentration of alcohol as a regular pina colada would be. So it reads about as much as I would expect a Jamaican rum to read in a more traditionally sized and specced uh, pina colada, but with a much more, I guess, characterful presentation than you would find in like a Cruzan or a Pusser's rum. It works really, really well. It does kind of step on some of the flavors here because the problem is that Overproof is so loud and pina colada, like a pineapple and coconut and orange are not. <laughs> you still get them all. You still get them all. They actually, actually the synthesis between the coconut 
the pineapple and the orange is really strong, but it becomes kind of one note, especially in comparison to the rum, which is so full of character and different from what you might find in a pina colada. It's got a long, nice, really, you know, in-depth evolution from the rum being so present, but a lot of those flavors from the juices that we're adding and that Coke cream of coconut sweetness, they're not hanging around very long. Um, so I think this might be a poor way to improve the painkiller by just adding, you know, overproof rum, but in a different balance with a more traditional rum, like a Jamaican and an overproof, you might find a bit more balance in those characteristics. This cocktail is so not worth all the effort and space it takes up. <laughs> so it's opening on this kind of dark, bitter oakiness from, from the rum and the way it was aged. It's got this very nice funky kind of pokey ethanol essence to it that warms up into really strong baking spices and sugars. Uh, a little bit of like a sort of metallic tinge I talked about before uh, from the molasses used in the distilling process. And at that point, the pineapple comes in and sort of lengthens it out and takes away the sharpness of it and gives it this little bit of acidic punch. The orange and the coconut are kind of hidden behind that interaction, I think. So maybe not quite hidden, but very, very quiet. The coconut is kind of ever present, but it's got this very low, droning, hidden, subtle. Oh, well, wait, because there's a kind of moment where the rum gets taken over by the pineapple and they dance together and go back and forth. I find the coconut comes up around the same time you start to taste the rum again. After the juices have sort of been recognized by your tongue and you know what you're tasting, the rum kind of comes back over that. It's because its flavor is just so rich and bold. And the coconut comes with it. It's got this sort of creamy and tropicalness to it. Pretty good, actually, I like that. The, the orange is hard to find. The, the orange juice in cocktails is a, I think adding orange juice to a cocktail is a pretty easy way to ruin a fucking cocktail. Orange juice doesn't hold up all the dilution. It has no acid. It has very little sweetness. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. Unless it is most of your cocktail, like it is in the Tequila Sunrise, you're not really gonna taste it. Here, where we're dealing with rum, a, care, a spirit with a lot of character, and an overproof rum at that, that has even more character than a normal rum, ah, uh, you can take it or leave it. But yeah, that is uh, disappointing. <laughs> to go from the Angostura Colada to this, the painkiller, in its original form anyway, um, I, I'm just very displeased. It looks, it looks so pretty. I mean, look at this. This is a really, really pretty looking cocktail, but looks are not everything. And I'm very, I find this to be very, very lacking in flavor. I, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that the pineapple juice is so present. Four ounces of pineapple juice is a lot. The fact that I'm able to taste the overproof over that and they're not like fighting for first place is genuinely kind of impressive because that's really good pineapple juice, but also, it's just so much. And I think that's why you can't get the orange. The orange is too subtle a characteristic to stand up to that much pineapple. And the cream of coconut is such a small pour by comparison that it's hidden. There's too much going on. And that's what makes me so fucking sad about this whole thing. This cocktail was stolen from the person who created it and then copywritten by a company who just happened to be the ones that, whose rum was in the cocktail. And then they shut down, uh, nearly shut down a business that went by a name tangentially related to what they were doing. Plus, I just had no fucking clue in actually making the original version of this cocktail, but this is what it is now because they decided to steal it from the people who actually knew what the fuck they were doing. And it makes me so fucking angry. <laughs> so fucking stupid. I hate that. <laughs> if I were to fix this, I would say, don't do what I did with the overproof do uh, one and a half ounces of a proper Jamaican rum and then half an ounce of overproof for some additional character. Cut back the pineapple juice to two ounces, do one ounce of orange juice, one ounce of lemon juice for a little bit of bonus acidity, and then one ounce of cream of coconut. You're still dealing with a lot of volume there, but it's a more approachable amount of volume. It will foam up similarly, and then you'll have this nice interplay between the acid and the lemon and the flavor of the lemon and the orange, and the pineapple sort of giving it the majority of its body and flavor, still keeping it a pina colada. Anyway, that's enough for being angry at capitalist douchebags. Let's read from Crisp Toasts. Last time we were continuing to read from the section entitled Adventure, and we are actually still in that same section. Today's toast from the adventure section of Crisp Toasts goes as such. 
<laughs> Take a trail, good friend, and luck to you. Short, sweet, all about just going. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch another episode of the show. Uh, I'd make one of these every single Friday and then sometimes on Tuesdays as well. So if you want to catch those and be notified when they go up, click the bell lock icon down below and you'll be told when they go up. You can also follow me on all of my socials that are either appearing on the screen now or have been up for some time. I don't really use many of them and this past week I've been kind of uh, blase about it just because I've been busy with other stuff. So if you do decide to do that, follow me on TikTok. I've used that one the most, but honestly, you could just stay here because you also get all of my short versions of my videos here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Remember to please, please, please drink responsibly and have a good rest of your day. And don't forget, punching a capitalist is always okay if they try to steal your shit. Have a good one. Bye-bye.